Hello everyone, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. I wanted to make a video showing how I set up all my emulators and stuff like that. If you're a Steam Deck user, you've probably heard about EmuDeck. And if you're not already using it, then you, you are missing out and you should be. Because this is probably the easiest emulation solution there is, that I know of at least. And of course, it's my, just my opinion, but the, the whole installation setup, or the whole installation setup of this is, is, is very seamless, and it's definitely been my favorite. Um, now, there's a few steps we want to take to install this, and it's very easy, so I'm going to walk you through this. So I basically just googled emudeck, or you can go to www.emudeck.com, and you're just going to click download right here. And it'll bring you down to this. You're going to download this Emudeck installer. Go ahead and download that. You're going to go over to your downloads folder here. And you're going to run this Emudeck uh, installer. And it'll bring you to this here. It's going to go through and download everything you need. Uh, it might take a few minutes for everything to to go through, but you're going to go through and get to this page here. This is actually the first time I am setting it up here just to kind of show you guys the, the process and what you can expect. Uh, it's going to take just a minute to download this. Um, before we go into the setup here, though, I want to kind of show you um, what you want to do um, as far as your ROMs go, excuse me. So um, you're going to just copy your ROMs over. I just made a, a, t a folder on my desktop here. I'm just going to copy your ROMs over. I have a USB drive that has my ROMs. Um, wherever you're obtaining your ROMs, you just want to put them somewhere. We're going to be moving those a bit later, and I'll just kind of show you that. But we'll go back over to EmuDeck. If you want to do easy mode, you can, but I highly suggest you just do custom mode, especially since I'm going to walk you through it. So click custom mode. Now, this is really just personal preference, but I'm just going to install EmuDeck to my in internal storage. I have the 2 terabyte SSD. You can do your SD card if you want, especially if you have the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck model and you're just using an SD card, just go ahead and use that instead. And then you'll select the Steam Deck. And then you're going to select which emulators you want. By default, it'll have these here. Um, I'm going to add Ryujinx. And I think that's good. So we'll go ahead and click Continue. And then this here is autosave. So it'll reopen your games. Or so these uh, supported games here, it'll reopen them at the place you left off. I'm going to leave that turned off. Uh, I'm going to skip the retro achievements here. I'm just not too into that. Um, this here is the bezels. If you want those, uh, I'm going to leave that off because i just not too into that either. Um, here you can select your aspect ratio. Now this is for these systems here. I'll just leave it original. Um, and then we'll do this one, the real SNES resolution. Please don't do this one. I beg of you, please don't. Please don't do that. We'll do 8x7. We'll do this original as well, GameCube original. Uh, no shaders, CRT shaders. If you want this kind of stuff, you can. It kind of just gives it that old school look. But I just kind of like, like everything clean and crispy. Um, this is your emulation station theme. If it's if it's something you plan on using, then choose whatever theme you like best. I just leave it on this one because I'm not really too into emulation station. I just like everything on my Steam menu rather than having a separate thing. And for those other games, I just have RetroArch installed for the, the retro games. So this might take a few minutes, but um, it's basically going to create a separate installation folder for your ROMs. And I'm going to show you basically where you place those real quick. So I have my ROM folder open right here. 
we're going to navigate to home, close this, and then you're going to go to emulation. Now this is just if you chose the internal storage. If you have it, everything on an SD card, then it'll just be on your SD card here and you'll see emulation listed somewhere. But for now, I'll just show you on the internal because obviously that's where I have mine. So you go to emulation and then it's gonna give you these um, folders here. This is basically where all of your games are saved, your saves and your BIOS and all that. Um, so it's gonna create these folders. There's a bunch of different systems. Um, I'm going to show you two systems on here that I'm going to set up. The first one is GameCube. So I'm just going to go over to my GameCube folder, and I'm going to move these over to that. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my, let's see, my PS2 folder. There it is. And then I'm just going to move my PS2 games over. Oops, don't want to copy. Let's move those over. Over right. There we go. So I have my PS2 games in here. And then you're also going to want a PS2 BIOS. Um, let me just talk about that for a minute. So I already have my BIOS files here. Obviously, I can't give those to you because um the bios is like copyrighted material from sony uh, or any other company that you're trying to get a bios for like the nintendo switch or whatever um those they are copyrighted so i can't i can't just give you links to those to download them however um you know use google there are legal methods right now you can actually um, you can extract the PS2 BIOS from the PS3 firm firmware that's on Sony's website. So there's a legal avenue of doing that if you want to just obtain it that way. Um, or you can just use Google. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but you know, you can, you can do that. These are the PS2 BIOS files that I have here. They'll usually come in that bin format. Um, I'm just going to copy all of these over. Um, these are these are all the BIOS packs that that I'm going to need for different systems here, uh, PS One, Xbox, whatnot. So I'm going to copy those over into this BIOS folder under emulation, and there's a, a built-in um, thing for emmy deck where it lets you test the bios files and make sure that they're valid which i'll show you in just a second so like i said it's probably going to take a few minutes to install everything here so i'll skip forward to when everything's installed and i'll show you the next step all right guys looks like emmy deck is done installing so now we can go here and click add games and you know, actually, I'm just going to skip this for now and kind of show you uh, something else real quick. So I'm going to go to the BIOS checker and just quick click that. Um, so I have the uh, PlayStation 1 BIOS, PS2 BIOS in here, um, which is good. It means it's recognized, and that should work. And I can't tell you where to get those files, but just use your imagination and figure it out. <laughs> um, okay, so once we've gone here, once we're on this main page, and by the way, uh, Emmy Deck will create a shortcut um, right here for you. So you can just double click that and Emmy Deck will open. It'll check for updates and it'll sometimes prompt you to update from there. But now what we want to do is is add some games. So we're going to use Steam ROM Manager. So you're going to launch this. It'll give you this little window uh, basically saying it's going to close Steam. And um, or it basically tells you that it'll revert the controls because Steam is closing. Um, you'll see Steam close right there. 
So here is Steam ROM Manager. So when you first start out, you'll see all these different parsers here. Um, I know it looks scary and confusing, but don't worry about these here. You don't really need to mess with these unless you want to go in and say, for instance, you want to add one of these parsers that's not in here. So like Xenia isn't enabled by default, but you can go in and do it if you want to. Or I believe um, Ryu Jinx is also not enabled by default. So if we go down, um, you'll probably see wherever Ryu Jinx is listed. There it was. Um, oh, I just lost it, but you get the idea. You can just go in and enable consoles that may not be enabled by default or emulators here. But we want to just press preview. You don't have to mess with anything there. Just press preview and then click parse. Okay, it's going to go through and scan this folder, um, this one where your emudeck installation is, right here. It's going to scan this folder, all these, and as you remember, we put the PS2 games and the GameCube games in. Um, so we'll scroll down through this list and you'll see with the emulators, it'll also give us the, um, the games that we have. So we'll go ahead and select a cover art for those. I'll probably just do the default ones for these. We'll do, uh, let's see, you know, we'll do, we'll do this one. We'll do this one, that one looks good. Um, if you want, you can disable the emulators um, for them not to show up on your in your steam library um to do that you actually just go to uh just go back here and then if you turn emulators off you can also turn off emulation station if you don't want that which i might actually do um click parse and that should remove those yeah so you see here it just shows my games now which if I ever need to go in and adjust any settings for these emulators, I can always go into desktop mode, which is what I'd prefer, really. I don't want all those emulators bogging up my home screen. So, um, these are my games here. So we're just going to click Save to Steam, and it'll show this little thing there. Depending on how many games you have, this could take a while. It might take five minutes or so to do if you have a thousand games or more. Um, but you'll see um, the little box said done adding slash removing entries. Once you see that little green line on it, you know that it's good to go. Um, so now we can just close this. And we'll close Emu Deck. And we will jump back over to gaming mode. All right, we're back. Let's go into my library. And now you can see I have this collections folder or I guess tab with the different games that I have um, these are also shown under non steam so that's pretty cool um, now keep in mind if you have a lot of games that you're adding your non steam folder is going to be very packed with games and uh, you're gonna have a lot of collections here for all of your different consoles and Sometimes when you go over to the tab, it might take a minute to load, or not a minute, that's that's an exaggeration. It'll take like a few extra seconds, maybe two or three extra seconds to load, depending on how many games you have. It doesn't bother me that much, but if you like the snappiness of this interface here, you're gonna want to keep your, your ROMs to a limit. Or what you can do is either use Emulation Station for a lot of your retro games, or you can just do what I did here and keep the bigger games within Steam. Like these are the ones I'm actually playing currently. And then use all your other retro games, maybe N64, PS, PS1 and below uh, in RetroArch. Uh, I feel like that's a, a bit less cumbersome and kind of keeps all my games uh, saved in, in one place. And best of all, RetroArch supports cloud saves for your game. So it's good to just have those cloud saves ready to go uh, and you not, not have to worry about losing your saves for a lot of those games. 
ME Deck also has a cloud save solution, but personally, I just I just back everything up to my USB drive uh, just to make sure everything's good. Um, so yeah, this is how you set up ME Deck. Like I said, it's very easy. Uh, it's the setup process is extremely simple, and best of all, is your games are gonna work out out of the box for the most part. Um, very rarely have I had to go in and change settings. All of these games just work, and I'll I'll display that right now with with a few games here. Um, obviously, this is Animal Crossing. Um, if you ever want to go in and change settings, like I said, you can just do it in desktop mode. Or if you added it to the to your um, game mode shortcuts, but um, you can change the aspect ratio and do all that type of stuff. But um, okay, I don't have my game save copied over, but um, yeah, as you can see, it, it boots up just fine. Um, the PS2 games will also boot up fine. I'll start up Jack and Daxter, even though I again haven't transferred my save back over, but. I'll just kind of show you that it it is working just fine. See, it's booting up, um, and I'll say it's it's really cool to have all your emulated games in your Steam library along with your other ones here. Um, so it's just really cool to have this kind of setup. Um, but like I said, if you have a lot of games, you're gonna want to explore other options like using RetroArch or just deal with the, the load time just a few extra seconds but yeah it's it, it might be a little annoying for some of you but that's about it for this one here if you have any questions about this process let me know it's really simple so i don't think you will but if anything comes up if you have any issues let me know and i'm happy to help out um, i'll go ahead and wrap this up here uh, please leave any other comments if you have any requests of games you want to see running on the steam deck specifically whether it's emulation or, or otherwise um, but yeah, that is it. I will leave it here and you guys have a great day. Thanks.